I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. I hope you had a beautiful new year, Eve and a start to the new year. Well, uh, today we're going to talk about the oral microbiome. We all speak about the gut microbiome. We know about the importance of your gut health. We know about the importance of maintaining a balance in your microbiome and your gut because your gut is connected with every possible condition that you have. Treating cancer without looking at the health of your gut is useless. Treating Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, heart disease, skin issues, acne, hair fall, weight loss, weight gain, without considering the integrity of the gut is useless. You're not going to get a complete holistic 360 degree approach towards your recovery if you do not consider the gut and the health of your gut when it comes to any of these diseases. Well, you should know that you have a microbiome in your mouth as well. The reason why we wake up and our mouth smells, there is fermentation of bacteria that happens in our mouth when our mouth is closed at night. We have a microbiome of millions and millions of bacteria even in our mouth. And today, science is showing us the connection between the health of your oral microbiome, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, systemic lupus, which is an autoimmune condition, again, heart, your actual gut, including IBS, the microbiome in your mouth is also connected with the microbiome in your gut. You see, the reason why we fail in healthcare is because we separate every single disease. We take a kidney disease and we only look at the kidney. We take diabetes and we only look at blood sugar levels. We take the heart and we only look at the heart or we take a liver you know, problem and only look at the liver. We don't look at the whole body, but everything is interconnected, right? From the mind to your body, your oral microbiome to your gut microbiome. You have a problem with your skin, you have a problem with your hair, you just don't look at more creams and shampoos and external treatments. You look at what's going inside you, what's going wrong inside of you. And it mostly eventually comes down to your gut or your microbiome. So today, when we're treating Alzheimer's or cancer or whatever it is, we want to look at the health of your oral microbiome as well. Is it complicated? Absolutely not. Wherever we have microbes and bacteria, now don't get me wrong, microbes and bacteria are not bad for us unless they start growing out of balance. Unless the bad bacteria and the bad microbes become more than the good bacteria and the good microbes. That when, that's when we have all problems. Even related to our gum health, we know for the longest time that cardiovascular health is also related to the health of your gums. So it is so important for you to also have your regular checkups with your dentist. But now let's talk about some of the things that you can immediately do in the new year to look after your oral microbiome and to grow a nice balance of your oral microbiome. Number one is brushing your teeth. Okay, there are a lot of people who skip out on brushing their teeth at night or they do it in like 30 seconds in the morning. Make sure you brush your teeth. Of course, you want to look at the quality of your toothpaste and everything that you put in your mouth. So always read the ingredients. If you have something called SLS, which is a sodium laurel sulfate, or you have sodium fluoride in your toothpaste, or you have triclosan, or you have artificial sweeteners and artificial colors, know that it is also wiping out the good bacteria from your mouth. So you wanna choose a good toothpaste where you can read the ingredients and make an informed decision. Number two is this casual use of mouth fresheners and mouth washes. You need to understand that every alcohol-based mouth wash out there or mouth freshener out there strips you of the good bacteria. You see the same way an antibiotic works in its honest attempt to kill the bad bacteria, the antibiotic also kills the good bacteria. It's the same thing every time you use a mouth wash or a mouth freshener. Of course, there are a lot of natural ones that are non-alcohol based and essential oil based. You can find that in your markets. But if you're doing the most commonly branded ones, which are cheap, and that's why they're commonly branded, and that's why they have the worst ingredients, you are actually creating harm to your oral microbiome. So you wanna be careful of that. Again, the constant consumption of art artificial sweeteners. I can't tell you how many diabetics have been fooled with deceptive marketing of artificial sweeteners. You find them in your splendors and all of the crap that exists out there. And today, science, proven science has shown us that yes, it may be low on calories, but over time, it's actually creating insulin resistance, making it worse for a diabetic. And every time you have artificial sweeteners, it is also messing up the oral microbiome in your mouth as well as your gut. So you wanna be careful of artificial sweeteners. You'd rather change your lifestyle, maybe have a little bit of jaggery or sugar the right way, but also reverse your type two diabetes so that you do not have to go through shortcuts of artificial sweeteners, which are absolutely doing no harm to you. 
show me a person who's lost weight because they moved to artificial sweeteners because of the low calorie lie. Doesn't exist, absolutely doesn't exist. But today we have artificial sweeteners that are connected with the onset of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cognitive brain disorders, and so many other issues. So you wanna be careful of the way that deceptive marketing fools you. Low calorie, we think we're gonna lose weight. No, you lose weight only when you make lifestyle changes. Okay, your diet is extremely important. What you eat for your gut, you also eat for your oral microbiome. So your fruits, your vegetables, your fermented foods. The fermented foods that pass through our mouth can also help us to populate the right kind of bacteria. So our prebiotics, our probiotics, through our natural foods. If you wanna destroy your microbiome in your mouth, go on sipping all of your colas and all of your aerated drinks and all of your juices, your so-called healthy 100% juices, which are fruit-based. It's all gonna ruin your microbiome, which is why you'll see most kids today with damaged gums and damaged teeth. Not because of sugar consumption, but because of the consumption of juices found in cartons. Juices which are sold as 100% fresh juices, but which have no, absolutely no health benefits. It's only a glass of sugar because all of the benefits are destroyed in the process of making juice and preserving juice. So your diet is extremely important. We spoke about brushing. If you floss, floss the right way. Brushing your teeth should be at least two minutes of good brushing. Speak to your dentist to understand how you should brush for your benefit of your microbiome. Oil pulling is super powerful for your oral microbiome. This will take you less than three to four minutes in the morning. You can do oil pulling with sesame oil. You can do oil pulling with coconut oil. You can do oil pulling with coconut, which has elaichi or clove or cardamom soaked into. Make your own infusions of oil. When you wake up in the morning, before you even drink water or brush your teeth, you take one to two tablespoons of that oil and you swish it in your mouth. You gargle, swish, do not swallow. For about three to four minutes, spit it out, get on with your day, brush your teeth, use the toilet, whatever it is. But doing oil pulling for about a week or two weeks or four weeks in a row, most people record cleaner teeth, cleaner gums. Your bad breath disappears completely. There's a science to it. It has been scientifically, scientifically recorded. Oil pulling is not our invention. It exists in the Vedic studies of Ayurveda for over 5,000 years with all the scientific test studies done. Am I saying that it can replace your dentist? Absolutely not. But is it great for your microbiome and your mouth and your teeth? Absolutely yes. A tongue scraper, this exists in our country, in the tradition of our own country, where you have a tongue scraper and in the morning you scrape very gently from the base of your tongue to the tip of your tongue, you scrape. And you'll find a lot of the microbes, a lot of the bad bacteria, thick white coating eventually comes out. Now this again is great for your microbiome. It is great for people who have, from, who have bad breath. Pick up a simple tongue scraper. It's available everywhere. Some people have it on the back of their toothbrush, but I prefer a tongue, a tongue scraper because you can reach right at the back of your tongue and then with just gentle moves, scrape out all of the dirt and all of the poor bacteria off your tongue. And you'll see that your mouth feels fresher, your breath gets better, and your oral microbiome will eventually get better with that. See your dentist once a year or once in six months. It is extremely important for you to see because you cannot see what's happening at the back of your mouth, in your cavities, everything that you have. You see a lot of food particles, a lot of sugar. It gets jammed into small cavities that exist in our teeth right behind where we cannot see them and sometimes the brush cannot reach when they've already started to form cavities. So again, prevention is better than kill. Before you really have a tooth problem, at least once a year, see your dentist, get a checkup and check that out. Another simple, beautiful Indian tradition. After your meals, just simply go to the sink and gargle. Put some water in your mouth, gargle, spit out. Because there are small pieces of food that get lodged between our teeth and our gums, leading to all possible complications. So your mouth is not just your mouth. If you have a mouth disease tomorrow, or you have issues with your oral microbiome, let me repeat it once again. If you have an autoimmune condition, look at your oral microbiome. If you have cognitive brain disorders, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, all of that stuff, you gotta look at your oral microbiome, heart disease, brain issues. Today, science is showing us that small particles can actually cross from our microbiome in the mouth, cross the blood-brain barrier getting into our brain. So you see, it is so important for us to look at the body as a whole. 360 degrees, you have one problem, just don't look at the symptoms, address the root cause. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.